Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this joint session of the Empire Club of Canada and the Canadian Club of Toronto. On behalf of Gordon Reel and myself, we want to extend a very warm welcome to all of you, and of course, a very special welcome to our visitors who are here for the Economic Summit. I apologize for the long wait, but I'm sure you wouldn't have wanted an incident, and we have a very distinguished head table, and I don't know whether I'm going to have time to introduce them all, so I'm going to go at a very fast clip here, and you'll have to bear with me. On my extreme left, Mrs. Joyce Kaufman. Mrs. Kaufman. <laughs> Mr. Harry H. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. His attractive daughter-in-law, Margie, Mrs. Wilson. From Washington, we're thrilled to have uh, the Ambassador Niles, His Excellency Ambassador Niles. And Mrs. Schultz, also from Washington, Mrs. Schultz. His Excellency Ambassador Gottlieb, Ambassador Gottlieb. The Honorable Michael Wilson. <laughs> Secretary James A. Baker III, Secretary of the Treasury. <laughs> Mr. Gordon Reel, the President of the Canadian Club of Toronto. Mr. Reel. On my extreme right, Mr. Harry Seymour, past president of the Empire Club. <laughs> Sonia Sinclair, immediate past president of the Canadian Club. Madam Reagan, the Prime Minister of Canada and Mrs. Mulroney, and the President of the United States of America and Mrs. Reagan. Mr. Alan Monk, please come forward. Can't, there he is. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Oh, Canada, home and native land, true patriot 
Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in a toast to Her Majesty the Queen of Canada, La Reine, Queen. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in a toast to the President of the United States of America, and to his lovely and glamorous First Lady. <laughs> to the... And to his wonderful and glamorous First Lady. <laughs> Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, Mrs. Reagan, Mr. Prime Minister, Mrs. Mulroney, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. June 1988 is certainly going to go down in history as one of the busiest and most productive months in the lives of the four distinguished guests seated immediately on my left and on my right. We have a great deal to be proud of in our country. We are well aware and thankful for the tremendous economic growth in Canada, the impressive employment creation, the Meech Lake Accord, tax reform, and the free ta trade discussions, to mention just a few of the items that are occupying the time of the Prime Minister and our other politicians. Regardless of one's political persuasion, one has to be impressed with the pace of activity surrounding the first four years of Mr. Mulroney's tenure. <laughs> the agenda... As the President of the United States of America, this is a personal occasion for me, and it is the last opportunity for me to welcome him our country as president. As you know, there's something in the United States Constitution called the 22nd Amendment, which apparently limits the lease on the way those two terms. But that brought to mind an incident that actually occurred to me about a year and a half ago. I was sitting at the... <laughs> the president has done more to stay than stay the course. He has changed the course of America and world history. On a personal note, I have always found Ronald Reagan engaging and engaged, good humor and generous. I should tell you that the first time that I ever had a chance to meet him in the Oval Office, I was leader in the opposition. May that never happen again. <laughs> Ancestors put it another way. 
rise up to meet you. It will always be at your back. May the rain fall soft upon your fields and the sunshine warm upon your face. And until we meet again, may the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States.
that you've received tonight speaks more eloquently than my words. But on behalf of our two clubs, thank you and to you, Mrs. Reagan, with this gift from our two clubs. It is a carving by one of our foremost Inuit artists, Kiyawaka Shuna of Cape York.